Hi, I'm Braddock District Supervisor James Walkinshaw. Thank you for your interest in historic Oak Hill. Here in Fairfax County, we're fortunate to be surrounded by history. In so many eras and in so many ways, Fairfax County is the place where big things happened. Oak Hill was constructed circa 1790 on the historic Ravensworth Tract. It was built by Richard Fitzhugh, a descendant of one of the first land grant holders in Northern Virginia. It was a late Georgian style dwelling renovated during the 1930s by renowned restoration architect Walter M. McComber. The name Oak Hill comes from two large oak trees on the property. Each year, this historic place is open to the public so everyone can share in the discovery of our past. Last year, the pandemic made it impossible for us to hold this annual open house and community event. I was hopeful that this year would mark the return to that in-person event. However, the need to plan months in advance and the current surge of COVID's Delta variant precludes holding the event. I do look forward to working with our astute and dedicated team of volunteers, historians, and staff to ensure that next year we're able to hold this open house in person. But as we appreciate the architecture of the home and the natural beauty of the site, we also acknowledge that human beings were held here in bondage. Thanks to the work of local historian Beth Mitchell and the Fairfax County History Commission, we know that in 1856, Richard Fitzhugh's son David listed the property in his deceased father's estate, including the names and values of 41 enslaved people. Last year, I read their names, but those 41 are just a fraction of the hundreds of enslaved people who lived and toiled at Oak Hill and the other Ravensworth Tract properties. Despite its historic importance, Oak Hill was nearly lost to development. A call to action by the community and local officials halted its demolition. In 2004, Seville Homes, the Northern Virginia Conservation Trust, the Fairfax County Park Authority, and the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors agreed to a, to a historic and conservation easement to preserve the privately owned Oak Hill home and property, including its 200-year-old boxwoods. The owners were asked to open the property and the first floor of the home periodically to share this important piece of county history. Since the property was saved, the community has been invited to visit the home each year for tours and outdoor displays showcasing local history and the environment. I want to thank you for joining us for this morning's virtual event. To keep the tradition alive, Local historians, those who appreciate the property, and our amazing Fairfax County staff banded together to develop a virtual video tour of Oak Hill last year. The video was produced by Channel 16 and tells the story of the home's preservation. Its content is still timely, and since its online posting, 1,041 individuals have enjoyed Oak Hill's story. My office is pleased to support this wonderful project. Once again, I certainly hope to see you all in person for Oak Hill Day next year. Every building has a story. Often, when people think about preserved or restored properties, the first thought is of our local treasures, Mount Vernon and Gunston Hall. Tucked away in one of our own communities is a pioneer in preservation. Today, Serving as a private residence as opposed to a museum, this property stands as a significant example of early preservation efforts in Fairfax County. Oak Hill in Annadale, Virginia is the sole survivor of three 18th century manor houses that the Fitzhugh family built on the Ravensworth Tract. The property is an anomaly within the development of Northern Virginia. This colonial gem is quietly set back away from busy roads with 200-year-old boxwood bushes lining a driveway that leads up to the property. I was actually born uh, at Inova Hospital just down the street. 
I've been going up and down the roads that border this property for decades. Didn't know it was here. All I saw was greenery. Trees, bushes, a gazebo. Um, it wasn't until my wife saw that sign and we came in that we noticed it and we just fell in love with it. So if you're on uh, Brayburn, if you're on Wakefield Chapel, you might pass right, zoom right past by and say, so where's the historic building? Um, but if you go up a little path, a little driveway, um, you step into history. You go through a time capsule. Well, it's significant from both the architectural component as well as the cultural component. The architectural component obviously combines the Georgian era, the early era of the house, as well as the later additions, the colonial revi revival work that was done. And then when you look at the cultural aspect of it, you look at not only the fact that a U.S. president visited and stayed there, but also the involvement with the Civil War era, and just the fact that over the 200 plus years that it is, has been an estate, that many, many things have happened there, many, many stories, and it's all contributing to its place and sense of history. William Fitzhugh was the son of an English draper. He came to Virginia around 1670 and settled on the Potomac River near Fredericksburg. By the time of his death in 1701, he owned 54,000 acres from Westmoreland to Arlington County. One of the large land tracts granted to Fitzhugh was a 24,000-acre tract in present-day Annadale. When Fitzhugh died, the land was divided between his two sons. William Fitzhugh Jr. received the southern half, and Captain Henry Fitzhugh received the northern half, with Braddock Road serving as the dividing line. Ravensworth continued to thrive as a mid-18th century tobacco plantation. Richard Fitzhugh, William's great-grandson, was one of the first Fitzhughes to settle on the land in approximately 1790. He inherited 2,500 acres of the northern Ravensworth tract and built Oak Hill for his family home. Originally designed in the Georgian style, the property was constructed as a two-story, single-pile, wood frame dwelling with two rooms on the first floor, two rooms on the second floor, and a central hall plan. The property was expanded in the 1830s and then altered once more in the late 1930s. Over the course of its lifetime, Oak Hill has survived many significant moments in history. In addition to its role as a tobacco plantation and family home in Fairfax County, the property was visited by Thomas Jefferson multiple times during his presidency. In an 1804 letter from Thomas Jefferson to Nicholas Fitzhugh, he writes, the paper you were so kind as to send me will enable me to find my way through Ravensworth. And he also goes on to say that whenever I set off, it will be either in the morning early or in the afternoon and will accept Mr. Richard Fitzhugh's friendly offer of a breakfast or a bed as the case may be. A plaque was placed on the property in 2015 by the local Daughters of the American Revolution chapter to commemorate his visits. The property's proximity to D.C. also placed Oak Hill in a no-man's land of competing Union and Confederate armies during the Civil War. On the night of November 5, 1861, Oak Hill was the scene of a shootout between three scouts of the 3rd Regiment New Jersey Infantry and four cavalrymen of the Georgia Hussars. It has been called the Kitchen Skirmish because it happened in and around Oak Hill's detached kitchen. In an account from her diary on February 28, 1862, Margaret Dickens at nearby Ossian Hall described conditions. I took Randolph in the Rockaway as far as Edwards to see if I could get someone from there to drive me into town. The scene that met my view on the road made my heart sick. Such utter ruin and desolation. I had not imagined houses torn to pieces. The little Annadale Chapel, a ruin. Find trees cut down, even those in the graveyard. Fences, all gone. Like his ancestors before him, Richard Fitzhugh maintained his large plantation with enslaved labor. There are limited records about the enslaved at Oak Hill. We know that the property and the plantation were built and maintained by the enslaved. In 1799, he owned 20 enslaved people according to the tax rolls for that year. An inventory of the site was taken after Richard Fitzhugh and his widow had passed in 1856. Included in the inventory was a list of the names and values of 41 enslaved people at Oak Hill. 
Few on the list had both first and last names as the enslaved were taxed as personal property. After emancipation, three of the former enslaved purchased small parcels of Oak Hill land for their homes. All three of these gentlemen were born into slavery in Fairfax County and listed on the 1856 estate inventory for Richard Fitzhugh and valued from $300 to $700. Their names were John Newman, Oscar Newman, and Richard Newman. Unfortunately, there is little we know about the enslaved at Oak Hill. While the count of those living and working to maintain the property is not enough to measure the sacrifice of the enslaved, historians have plans to research the enslaved at this property in order to rightfully include their narrative in the history of Oak Hill. Oak Hill remained in the Fitzhugh family until 1889, when it was purchased by William Watt. There are records and accounts from his grandchildren about growing up on the Watt family farm and the wonderful memories that the family made on the property. Historic preservation efforts in the United States were at its peak when Edward and Jane Howery purchased Oak Hill in 1935. At that time, the property was evaluated by a civil engineer and it was concluded that the property was beyond repair. There was rotten siding, crumbling chimneys, deteriorated beams, and substantial termite damage but the Howerys were not deterred by the report. Instead, they moved forward with rehabilitating the property and opted to replace in kind to the original materials of the property. In 1945, they hired Walter Mayo Maycomer, the Colonial Revival Restoration Architect at Colonial Williamsburg and Mount Vernon, to assist with further rehabilitation of Oak Hill. Maycomer was also the architect hired for the rehabilitation of Green Springs Manor House, also located in Fairfax County. His rehabilitation of the property included adding heavily ornate rounded arch surrounds, high-style Georgian interior paneling, and carved mantles and over mantles. The interior restoration is modeled after Mount Vernon, with some influence from the style of Ossian Hall, another Fitzhugh property. Some interior architectural elements, such as the doors and woodwork, came directly from Riggs Mansion in Washington, D.C., prior to its demolition. His work helped to create the modern Oak Hill, which serves as a significant example of early preservation and restoration efforts in America. The property is recognized at the local, state, and national level as a listing on the Fairfax County Inventory of Historic Sites, Virginia Landmarks Register, and the National Register of Historic Places. Today, the property is privately owned, but protected through a conservation easement in place with Fairfax County and the Northern Virginia Conservation Trust. The conservation easement is a voluntary legal agreement that permanently protects significant historic properties from threats like urban development or significant change and to ensure future preservation and care by the owner. Conservation easements are a really good way to, you know, over time add to parks, add to open space and public lands, um, but also just keep communities, you know, as people know them. The current owners are highly dedicated to continuing to support Oak Hill's legacy, continue to be caretakers of the property, and graciously open their home to the community each year on Oak Hill Day. So it's, um, it's not just this, like you said, a historical museum, but it's kind of alive, it's active. We work with the community during Easter time. They have a egg hunt on the property and young kids come in. It's actually one of my favorite activities here. It's a, a morning of just laughter and kids running around. And it's wonderful. Um, I actually wouldn't want to give that up for just this kind of stoic, dry, documents under glass type of museum. Oak Hill is preserved in order to share stories of local history with its community. This extensive property served as a pioneer in early historic preservation and retained significant historic integrity despite the growth of Northern Virginia. Fairfax County has, uh, we, we hold 57 conservation easements in, in Fairfax County and we own three small nature preserves that were donated to us. And so we're always looking for more opportunities to protect special places throughout Fairfax County. Um, we have great relationships with the Fairfax County Park Authority, with Nova Parks, and the three of us together, uh, you know, provide landowners a lot of resources for the potential protection of places that really ought to remain that way as Fairfax changes and develops. If we had not been able to put together this partnership, and if the county had not been willing to purchase a historic easement on the property, um, 
Probably large houses would have been built up all around the manor house. The boxwoods would be gone. Um, the sense of history uh, really would be gone. You, you, you know, you would see that there is a great looking house, an old house. Uh, you might know about the history, but you know, but the history would be lost, really. Um, one of the things that we were able to do with a historic easement, uh, because the property continues to be owned by a family, and actually the Bracelands own the, own the property right now. Before that, it was the Sheets. They are required under the easement uh, to make the property available for people at least once a year, maybe more, uh, to, uh, to come onto the yard uh, and, to, and to view the first floor of the house. And, um, and we've taken advantage of that. And so if, if we had not done this, we would not have had the venue uh, to celebrate history and to celebrate Oak Hill.